Hey everyone, it's Pacific, and we're back with a very special episode. Joining us this week is Gus Sorol and Chris Maris from the incredible podcast, Black Box Down. Black Box Down is an incredible true crime podcast all about aviation disaster. And the best part is, you don't have to be an aviation expert to listen to it. Uh, Gus, who is an aviation enthusiast, will take you through every case, break down all the facts, and Chris, who knows nothing about aviation disasters, will ask all the right questions to help you understand the case. And you can even listen to me and our host and narrator, John Grills. Uh, We did a very special crossover episode with Black Box Down back in April, where we talked about aviation disasters from our favorite movies and broke down how real or how fictional they were. If you're interested in checking out Black Box Down, be sure to subscribe to them in your favorite podcast app of choice, like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts, or check our show notes below for a link to their show. Again, that is Black Box Down. It's an incredible podcast, and we're super glad to have Gus and Chris on this week's episode. And that's all I got for you this week. So, without further ado, this week's episode. Warning. The Foundation database is classified. Unauthorized access will result in detainment. Within this archive, you'll find the procedures, descriptions, and accounts of the most notorious anomalies we've encountered to date. Secure. Contain. Protect. Item number SCP-6901. Object class Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-6901 is currently partially neutralized due to the containment of SCP-6901-1, who is to be kept in a Class 3 humanoid containment chamber. With adequate amenities at Site-88, under no circumstances is SCP-6901-1 to have access to the Internet, nor any materials relating to the history of aviation. SCP-6901-1 is, however, permitted to assist Site Kitchen staff in preparing baked goods for Site meals. Prior to its containment, Foundation-operated web analysis bot Sigma-77, Nielsen, was to be kept in constant operation checked for defects twice a week by a Level 2 staff member. When functional, the bot searched video sharing services and forum communities for posts created by or related SCP-6901, specifically forums related to aviation. If a manifestation of SCP-6901 on a website was confirmed, the bot issued a DMCA takedown on behalf of major aviation regulatory agencies like the FAA and EASA, who cooperated with the Foundation alongside all major airline corporations to investigate containment of SCP-6901. As SCP-6901-1 was proven to be the sole source of SCP-6901, web analysis bot Sigma-77 has been retired. The most recent SCP-6901 affected wares, prepared by SCP-6901-1, are to be stored at a long-term foodstuff containment vault at Site-88 to prevent decay or mold. All affected personnel are to be cryogenically frozen until potential avenues for recovery have been researched. Description SCP-6901 was a phenomenon relating to the disappearance of commercial aircraft without corresponding evidence of the crash. At its peak, SCP-6901 was the cause of 60% of aircraft malfunctions, where no black box or debris was recovered, including the widely publicized disappearances of Air Tahiti Nui Flight 112, JetBlue Flight 201, and Emirates Flight 826. SCP-6901 targeted Boeing manufactured aircraft 40% of the time, One World Alliance Associated Airlines 56.7% of the time, and passenger aircraft 87% of the time. The phenomenon typically involved planes suddenly diverting from their standard course, the pilot and co-pilot showing alarm but reporting no hardware malfunction, and then dropping off the air traffic control radar, even in populated zones. To this date, no civilian authorities have discovered wreckage from an SCP-6901-affected flight. Primary cause of SCP-6901 is SCP-6901-1, a 37-year-old donut shop proprietor named Benny Slothrop formerly a resident of Park City, Utah. 
SCP-6901-1 is a dedicated member of several online communities relating to aviation and aviation accidents, including Planespotter.net, JetPhotos.com, AirDisaster.info, PlaneDown.com, and pprune.org, alias the Professional Pilot Rumor Network. Despite the fact that SCP-6901-1 is no known pilot's license of known aviation degree, he expresses a great deal of interest in the mechanics of air travel, the life of an airline pilot or engineer, and the exact sequence of events of air transport incidents. And close to all of their private life is consumed by these activities. Whenever SCP-6901-1 makes a post on any commonly frequented website concerning a notable aircraft, including admiration of its design, facts concerning its manufacture, or theories concerning a possible crash, SCP-6901 will occur to that aircraft on its next flight. SCP-6901-1 is aware of this fact and expresses pleasure in its ability to divert air traffic. According to SCP-6901-1, it redirects the plane to its donut shop on a miniaturized scale, duplicating it, and forcing the duplicated pilots to land on a fresh batch of undressed cake donuts it has prepared, which it then sells to consumers as plain donuts. All SCP-6901-1 affected flights and their duplicates are likely consumed thereafter. It is theorized a mild amnestic effect prevents SCP-6901-1's regular customers from feeling discomfort with the situation. Addendum 6901.01 Following the disappearance of American Airlines Flight 230 in 2020, Web Analysis Bot Sigma 77 discovered a post from a user against the V on the plane crash hobbyist forum planedown.com detailing exact specifications of potential engine failures in the 2017 model of the Boeing 737-800 and how such a plane could theoretically disappear off radar. Less than a minute following this post, Flight 230 underwent an SCP-6901 event and the post was flagged and subsequently tracked to an IP address in Park City. The miniaturized Flight 230 was discovered, duplicated, and served in the shop's inventory. Mr. Slothrop was questioned, detained, and subsequently designated SCP-6901-1 following his confession of his role in SCP-6901. The following interview is conducted following transport back to Site-88. So, Mr. Slothrop, is it? Yes, Benjamin Slothrop. Go ahead, confirm it. You've almost certainly got my fingerprints on record somewhere, you feds. Glad you all in the bureau are fans of my kind of fascinations, know what I'm saying? I can assure you, we have no relation to the FBI. Not in this matter. <laughs> Figures. So, you're interested in aviation, right? Airplane spotting. Mechanics of them, correct? <laughs> Is a bear Catholic? Does the Pope shit in the woods? Um, excuse me? It's an understatement, to be sure. I can't imagine life without the skies. I've done a lot of stuff in life before baking, and I do love baking, cooking, what have you, but... To say I'm quote-unquote interested in airplanes is a joke and a half. Airplanes are the world. This has been since you were a kid? Certainly. I would expect that's when these sorts of things develop. These sorts of things? Yeah. Development of these identities start in youth. Any psychologist will tell you. I see. Oh, come now. We're all adults here. I've got nothing to hide. It's the 21st century. I'm fine with what I am. I mean, I've had my periods of shame, but we live and let live. We move on. We grow to like ourselves. It's a part of me. Airplanes. I'll change the subject. Or perhaps rephrase. When did you first discover you had this... Let's call it... An ability. Hmm. Actually, pretty recently. With my last partner, they... They kind of... Well, I was just theorizing. You know, throwing spaghetti at the wall. Idle shit. The Boeing 737-800, the Ryanair models, look... We all know how bad they are as a company. So we were just playing around, experimenting, couple shit. I was typing, you know, we like the forums, we both. And I was noting at the time, you know, Turkish Airlines flight 1951 crashed in the Netherlands 2009. Oh, those left altimeters sometimes, gotta tell you. So, Ryanair, all things considered, what if? Just theorizing, thinking out loud, and then it was just automatic. They were there. The crew? Well, yeah. I had to go into the shop. I had to work. She was, she was working with me. Sorcha was. We're not together anymore, Sorcha and I. I should clarify that, sorry. So, but then we would go into the back of the shop where the dough proofs, and we have that great big mixer, browse the forums, smoke a joint, two, three. Wasn't unusual, but that day, I guess, the first time I did it. The weird thing. 
Uh, and it was truly just automatic. You know that something is just right. You pick them up. You try a hot donut. Mmm, good. The crunch, the tang. It's odd, sure, but you're an odd guy. Type up a jokey sign. You set them out for display, and it never once crosses your mind as bad. Did customers notice anything unusual? No, no, that was a funny thing. No one had a clue. I usually tried to pick the ones with passengers, and you'd think it'd freak them out. Nah, they got on my wavelength like that. First guy who tried one, Dylan from the Sundance Institute, one of my regulars. He loved it. Not quite as much as I did that first time, but who would? <laughs> yeah, I would. They never noticed what they were putting in their mouth. I don't know, maybe? Probably not, but I hope so. It's kind of cool, right? And you never felt disgust at the fact that you were serving and eating actual people? People? Well, they're not people. I mean, they are, but... And I was floating this with Sorcha back not long after I started selling the donuts, and we were super duper fucking baked. Like, I'm talking sky high here, monster blunts. Knock you out for a day kind of weed. Well, anyway, I was saying how I feel people are really important in as much to airplanes. You need a pilot. You need air traffic control. On a passenger flight, you need pilots. So, in some sense, you find yourself drawn to the actual plane itself. And that's what was there. I mean, that's why I was calling them plane donuts and not people donuts. I mean, there's no pun there. Come on. So, you continued to post. Couldn't not post. Couldn't not eat. It's my life. I mean, let's be real here. Who needs people? I got me my donuts, my weed, my internet, and my planes. I've got the skies. You've overcome the final natural barrier in the skies. The long parabola of gravity. Tell me, do you ever have vivid fantasies about being in a plane crash? Uh, I um, have, ever since I was a kid. And, you know, maybe that's why I didn't make friends as a kid. Even Sorcha kind of hated it. Maybe that's why it didn't work out. Maybe. Uh, but I've been on a computer since 1995. Not a day's gone by since then without one. I still have these fantasies. Or maybe visions where I'm in business class. Got my ginger ale. A Jerry Bruckheimer film edited to shit on that little screen. Sometimes it's a hijacker, a terrorist, but oftentimes the wing just goes. The lightning hits and it falls off. The fastened seatbelt sign turns on. Bing! There are kids, babies, they're screaming. We descend rapidly. Bump it a bump it a bump. And I see that seat back in front of me. Action movie gone black, gone dark. And I know it. That is the thing that will kill me. It's going to happen any second. I can feel it. It's going to kill me, and I'm going to die. The ground is rushing closer, and that seat back will be the last thing I see before it smashes into the front of my skull. And that's it, baby. The final blunt. The last donut of the night. The contrail at the end of the world. And there's nothing I can do, and I love every second of it. It's like no drug on earth. I take it you're not in a relationship with this sort of person anymore. Uh, yeah, I mean, they had breaking points. It's fair. But hey, I am who I am. Like me or leave me, I'm here. I'm not ashamed. I won't change. At heart, really, I'm a simple man. I'm not a big problem if you let me operate in peace. I cook. I smoke in the back. I make coffee drinks, mostly for tourists. It is Utah. I frost and decorate orders. I make my customers happy. You do seem to think of yourself that way. And you caught me, so, uh-oh, my bad. I guess there won't be any more twosome crunch in the donuts. But hey, you never tried to fish fuselage out from between your teeth or felt motor oil and bone on the vanilla cake texture. It's just as well. Who knows? Hey, maybe you're ashamed deep down. You have oddball qualities. You never ate one. Maybe you can change. This interview is terminated. <laughs> I just realized my first one was a 737-800, and the one that got me caught was a 737-800 as well. Pretty fucking rad, yeah? Hey everyone, Pacific here with a quick ad break. And a reminder, ad-free and bonus episodes are available on our Patreon at patreon.com slash scp underscore pod and on Apple Podcasts, where you can simply click subscribe and get a free seven-day trial. Alright, thanks for listening, and now, back to our show. Addendum 6901.02 Prior to their cryogenic hibernation, the six duplicated sets of subjects aboard American Airlines Flight 230 have been trying to adapt to life on the donuts prepared by SCP-6901-1. 
and had maintained a rudimentary system of communication with their counterparts by both burning small sections of donut matter, using an accelerant illegally placed in carry-on luggage, and using a shout-based message system. Weekly interviews were conducted with one of the duplicates of Captain Dan Burgess, speaking on behalf of his five counterparts, using a micrometer transcription microphone lowered down to the donut. All right, hi again, Dr. Tall and Lovely. Tell me, how tall and lovely are you? I'm not going to answer that, and you know it, Captain Burgess. Oh, well, it was worth a shot. You loom over me so much, I have no way of judging any size. I do see your eyes, though. It's like the size of goddamn mountains. Have you seen your eyes? They're very moist. So I take it everything's proceeding with some capacity down there? No. No, it's really not. I mean, let's be real here. It's kind of cool seeing yourself, but all I have to eat is increasingly stale donut. There's mold encroaching, which is making us sick, especially those poor guys over in Plane 5. And in the end, I don't think we're meant to be this small. Well, what do you mean? In the last week, one of us, the captain, started just feeling sick, like he was being crushed by pressure. It started happening to a lot of us, too. The third Mrs. McCaffrey, the second and third Mr. Perez, all the baby Tobies. Just the air beginning to cave in. They just go back in the plane to their seats and lie there, groaning. Marie, you know, the attendant with the nurse training, she says there's nothing wrong with them physically. They're just in pain. You know, you do have very lovely eyes. Thank you. But let's get back to the state of things down there. We'll get someone from the medical department to come in and take a look, but I don't really know how efficacious that would be. Anything you can do is fine. It's just, it's starting to get really bad down here. We're running out of food, so we're eating the donuts. Uh, there's nothing to do, really. I mean, nothing to build with. People are terrified, grieving. The lights of the cabinet mean no one can sleep. The duplicates, I mean, they're a novelty, but, uh... Yes? This is hell. This is unimaginable hell. I mean, I've been flying 20 years, and I can't do this. We know each other too well. I mean, the duplicates, I mean. I mean, at least we haven't been eaten in our metal calzone by a monstrous giant. I mean, that's great. A real improvement, you could say. You know, you can just always tell the psychologist what you five are going through. But I need to let someone know what I'm going through. I'm not those four other guys who look like me. I'm my own person. Sure, they've been flying American Airlines for six years, the same other airlines before that, have the same deceased wife, same strange daughter, same aversion to wildlife after that teenage zookeeper job with the skate monkey in the cafeteria, same crushing experience of hell, but I do too. I'm my own person, doctor. I can't always speak for the group. This is insane. It's insane. I, I mean, I'm dying here on a donut. A donut! Not even a frosted or glazed or cinnamon sugar donut. It's a boring ass plain donut. No toppings, not even a fucking sprinkle. And why am I going to die a millimeter tall on a goddamn donut? Because apparently, a fucking cannibal plane wizard with no life put me here to eat me and five clones of me. Gah. I mean, this is a bad dream, I swear. Every day I think to myself that this can't be happening and I'm gonna wake up and be in the departure lounge at LAX or Dolas. I mean, what did I do in life to deserve this, Doctor? What did I do? I wasn't the best guy ever, sure, but I thought I was okay. Maybe I wasn't okay. And this is my punishment. I don't know. I don't, I don't give a fuck. This is absurd to no end. I'm trying to make campfires out of lingerie and stale fried pastry to keep warm in a filing cabinet. I just want to deal with normal mechanical failures. If we were crashing, if we were crashing over the Atlantic Ocean, I would have tools, I would have guidelines to remember. It would be normal. And now I'm trying to justify my fucking anxiety at being a clone spokesman to a woman the size of Kilimanjaro. On a donut! Maybe this is my punishment. Maybe this is what I get for spending 20 years in a metal tube in the sky. Never settling in any one place, always on the run, flights that go hours and hours, the industry in decline, corporate cutting corners, I don't know. Did I miss out in life in some nebulous way? Maybe I could have been there for Kelly more. Let's attach to the job, to the planes. You know, she, she said she didn't want my help. I don't know. I don't know what I could have done differently. It's, I'm just me, and I can't change who I am. I make my own decisions. Should I have gone to a mountaintop and studied, meditated for years? Ugh. I got mountains on the brain. I used to love the Rockies route. 
going into Portland. You can see Mount Hood in the distance. I haven't seen a mountain in weeks. Maybe even months if you can't before this. It can't be like this. You gotta get us back to normal. It's not working. It's just not working. Yes. I suppose they are. What? Nice. My eyes, I mean. Addendum 6901.03. Dr. Roberta Vaughn submitted the following memorandum to Site Director Oxnard regarding SCP-6901. Jerry, I respectfully request you take me off this project. Both SCP-6901-1 and the Burgesses are in need of severe psychological help in different ways that are impacting my research. They're latching onto me, and I no longer think we can continue studying the anomaly this way. SCP-6901-1 needs an outlet, and he's harmless enough that we can assign him to be a baker in the site cafeteria. Maybe he'll let the plain thing go a bit. And the survivors need to be in suspended animation for the time being. The actual plane can be preserved, but at that scale, the mold and rot, not to mention this unknown shrunken pain condition, could damage them all before we can research how to undo their miniaturization. It makes sense to assign two different researchers to both areas of the project, if only to split up the mental workload. I'm uncomfortable around both of them, to be frank. And... They made me realize that I've been kind of almost compromised as a scientist in how deep I've been here. I'm too close with something abstract now. Too disconnected from something tangible and real, which I suppose is an occupational hazard at the Foundation, considering the anomalies and the secrecy and the paratech, but I worry that anyone else who takes the burden of both these men will discover that also. I need to be relieved of duty. And I recommend that my dual replacements update the containment procedures. Yours, Dr. Roberta Vaughn. From the office of Jerry Oxnard, Director, Site 88. Take a vacation, Bobby. I understand what you mean. We all do. You're a trusted researcher. I will take your recommendations into consideration. Don't get caught up in the man-made. Go somewhere tropical. There's a low-level site in Costa Rica that has resorts a front. At any rate, please, take care of yourself. Personal time granted. This episode features special guest stars Gus Sorolla and Chris Damaris from Black Box Down. Black Box Down is an incredible aviation disaster true crime podcast that you have to check out. John and I had a ton of fun when we guest starred on their show back in April, uh, where we talk about aviation disasters in some of our favorite movies, and you can learn all about aviation disasters by finding Black Box Down wherever you listen to podcasts, or in our show notes below. And of course, this episode wouldn't be possible without thanks to our patrons. Joining us this week is Devin S., Zachary Kelly Bruton, Cyan, Ryan Donovan, Kyle Lawrence, Chris Barth, Melanie Handabo, Ashley Clemenicus, and Happy Engineer. SCP-6901 was written by Lord Stonefish. Our host and narrator was John Grills. Benny Slothrop was Gus Sorolla. And Captain Burgess was Chris Damaris. Dr. Roberta Vaughn was Addison Peacock. And Site Director Oxnard was Jesse Hall. Our assistant editor is Danny Sweet. And our sound designer this week was Jesse Hall. Our community manager is Celeste Kesyon. And this week's transcript was done by Janine Bauer. All of our music is done by the incredible Tom Rory Parsons, and I'm your showrunner, Pacific S. Obadiah. Our producers are Tom Owen and Brad Miska, and this is a bloody disgusting podcast. <laughs> <laughs>